Hi, welcome everybody in the uh, infrastructure team, weekly team meeting. Um, we have all around the table, uh, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, um, Bruno Verachten, Kevin Martin, and myself, Stefan Merle. We may have uh, Damien uh, joining soon if he can find power and, and internet connection. Um, so for the announcements right now, we got the weekly. I'm not sure it's the good one. Four, three, seven. Is that the, yeah. the current one? Good one. Yeah. Yes, that's yes. correct. And so, it is uh, now visible on at least one mirror. I've confirmed it. And so I'm not sure that uh, the three the mirrors tag now. For, three mirrors. I'm not sure the tag for the for the. Um, sorry, the word is coming. The image, the Docker image is not done yet. I think it will come later. Um, building issue, uh, we um, so it's, issue, it's okay. Yeah. Sorry, we go I, ahead. Um, yeah. Damien started last week to add some uh, budget uh, numbers. Um, I don't have uh, Azure and AWS. I just have the uh, current digital Sun one. So, and uh, I've got, uh, uh, not current, but he, he reported to me recently that we were under budget in November, uh, successful and on track to stay under budget in December, and that we've begun increasing consumption of the Azure uh, donation. So, so yes. we're not yet at full consumption of the Azure donation, but we are increasing our consumption. We did work on that this morning by uh, uh, trying to use more of the the new uh, Azure uh, sponsorship with the Packer images built. We we worked on that this morning, so it will be more and more on on that um, subscription. Um, so yes, and for Digital Ocean, uh, we saw that we can uh, we can keep going on until January, but not too far in January. So we need to make sure that Digital Ocean is renewing early in January. We'll, can, we'll see that later, but I've got confirmation from Oliver today is that they'll renew it uh, first week of January. Perfect. Okay, so let's let's move on. For the next announcement, um, as it's the end of the year, next week we will all be on holidays between the Christmas and, and New Year. Mm -hmm. So we will not have any infra meeting next week. I'm not sure you will have um, uh, a weekly next week. What do you think, uh, Mark? I propose we cancel it. Any objections from others to cancel it? I'm I'm talking about the 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 Jenkins weekly. Will it be? Oh uh, no, we will. We would definitely have a Jenkins weekly. I I'm too. Sorry. At least I propose we keep that because I'm too lazy to turn off the clock. <laughs> <laughs> too risky you're right so, so I, you I just will have I, I, I have no interest in turning off the clock that generates those releases okay, okay. so so next week you will we you will have the 2.438 yes 26th of december yeah it's it's a very good day because it's my uh, sense day i'm not sure you just you say sense it's nonsense uh the next lts is still the 24th of january 2.426.3. Uh, let's see if there is any announcement for the advisory. Uh, nope. No, 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 no announcement. Okay, so nothing to say about the security release. And next major event is the force dam, and we can confirm that we will be in. Uh, in Bruxelles, most of us, uh, from the 2 to 3 and 4 of February to attend the FOSDEM, and the contributors submit the 2 of the 2nd of uh, February. We need to book everyone, planes, train, hotel, and everything. Um, it's OK for you. Do you have anything uh, on the appointment calendar to say, to add? Cool. So let's go with the, what we have done. And starting by uh, someone archive a repository database result plugin. 
I'm not quite sure what this is about. But, uh, uh, so I can but, talk to that one, Stefan, if, I, if I it helps. I can take over if you want. Oh, I'm cool. Back. Or even better, Damien's here. No, I no, no wait. Stefan, continue, continue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Stefan, you were doing this so good. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I have a power failure. Sorry. <laughs> Hmm. But what we actually have is a truth failure there, right? <laughs> Can you chair, Damien? Oh, we lose Damien. <laughs> See? Continue, See? continue, he, he Stefan. Doesn't, he doesn't want to. Ooh. Okay, so uh, can you can you talk about this one? The I archive can. of uh, database yes, so, so um Valentin Delay uh, detected that we've got a plug-in that is designed to access a service that no longer exists and has not existed for many years. And there's no point in having a plugin that that is delivering service to a, an entity that no longer exists. So he proposed to archive the plugin. He submitted the pull request to the update center to archive or to to remove it from distribution and to to mark it as archived. We've Perfect. done that repeatedly with other services that that disappeared. When a service disappears, the Jenkins integration plugin that connects to that service no longer makes any sense. Uh, Fabricator, I think, was one of those. There have been been several that went through that where a a service ceases to exist and Jenkins integration to it is also no longer relevant. Cool. So next one, plug it doesn't build on infra due to missing Docker agent. Damien, do you want to, to talk about this one? This one is for Hervé, I believe, oh. since he took care of this. Sorry. So um, I started uh, 10 days ago merging a Jenkins file for a plugin file, a plugin site. And, um, for that, I also needed uh, Infra CI to look at uh, the correct Jenkins file. This pull request uh, was merged, but I didn't finish uh, the merging of the Jenkins file, so the plugin site uh, job on Infra CI was failing, as it was looking uh, at uh, Jenkins file using Docker instruction. I've then uh, since then uh, merged uh, two Jenkins side and uh, some plugin site is now currently running on awesome. both instance from a uh, unique file. Yeah, so that was just because in the between. Good work. Thank you. So, boop, update CI, CI to the latest version. That's, that's the usual update that we're dealing with. Uh, right access to a new user, CTH. So this one I have no clue, so let's check. That was dealt with by uh, not my fault, who sent an invitation. Okay, so thank you. Um, Agent availability are failing. Oh, I can talk about this one. Yes. Go ahead. Um, so what happened is that uh, since that agent is not manager's code because uh, we don't have a Puppet 6 package for uh, that CPU architecture, uh, we have to manage it manually today. And uh, since we changed the tool installation version of Maven on CI Jenkins IO a few weeks ago, to use Maven 3.9.6 instead of .5, that started to make the script failing. And as you can see on the screenshot here, uh, we unforced the path to the 3.9.5 or 6. So it was searching for a 3.9.6 on that agent. So um, I've so thanks Mark for taking care of this uh, by removing the failing check for that agent. Um, I've uh, rolled back the change, installed the new Maven version. So now we have two paths from here. The first one will be avoid alerts and failures by um, ensuring that when we automatically update Maven tools version on the controller, we exclude that one. The alternative being we keep it that way until we find a way to automate that machine installation. And in that case, uh, we can, uh, when we see a failure, that means we have to operate and update the agent to avoid uh, the agent rotting somewhere. I don't have a specific opi or strong opinion 
uh, what do you think about keeping it as it and updating it uh, when it fails or do you want to avoid failure? Update it when it fails works fine for me. The machine is relatively low low use for us. And so the, the risk is not high and spending effort on other automation themes more valuable to me than spending it on System 390. And I'm assuming that when we will uh, upgrade Puppet Boot to Puppet 7, that will be easier, isn't it? Doesn't it? I don't, I don't know if Puppet 7 or 8 have a, a native package as well. Uh, theoretically, we could compile the Puppet agent binary and, and build it. Uh, that's not that complicated, but we never spend the time for this. Other alternative is to define a tool location which will be different, that will detect if it's on that, you know, on that specific platform that takes care of downloading Maven. That could be an alternative, and we stop installing Maven as it, leaving only the GDK to Maven to in install there. Yeah. That's one feature of the tools that we could have there. But no, no more action right now, and yeah. OK, thank you. Do you want to uh, take over? Yes. OK. Uh, I, I, can I let you screen share? It's not a problem. OK, so the next one is remove pipeline agent build history plugin. So we did an experiment with that new plugin, but it appears that that plugin has performance issues. And moreover, we installed it for showing it. But on weekly CI Jenkins IO, we don't have any agents which defeats the purpose of showing off with that plugin. So we removed it from the image and we can discuss that topic more in details when it will come back. But right now, performance is issue and no agent is, is a reason to remove it. So thanks folks for taking care of this one. Next one, uh, no question on this one? No, okay. Next yeah. one, SSL certificate for repo Jenkins CI expires 20 December uh, tomorrow. So we have a three month valid certificate uh, um, emitted by Let's Encrypt Authority. Um, at the same time, Kosuke started and completed uh, the generation of a one year valid GoDaddy certificate which mean uh, he contacted directly GFrog to install it. So at any moment, the certificate on Repo Jenkins will be updated to expire only in one year. I've added the calendar event for the Let's Encrypt by default, four weeks, three weeks, and two weeks before the next expiration. When this event will happen, we will decide either were we able and successful on having GoDaddy certificate and we just update the calendar, Otherwise, we install a new Let's Encrypt certificate as proposed by Hervé. That's not that much a problem if we do it in advance. Is it clear? Do you have any question or things to add on this one? Nope. So next but last topic, Maroc, it's for you. Yeah, so we had a spam outage, a spam incident that's described by Uli Hoffner in that in that message, December 6, 2023, a spammer modified 1,000 plus Jira, in, Jira um, bug reports. And some of the modifications were damaging enough that we reviewed with the board and with Jenkins officers a proposal to roll back. And we did. We rolled back to December 6, 2023. The rollback means we lost submissions from people that were made between December 6, 2023 and yesterday's rollback. Um, I have captured CSV representations of some of those things and Daniel Beck captured others in the security project, but we should consider that things between December 6 and December 18 are potentially lost from issues.jenkins.io. That was accepted as much worse, much better than the the alternative of attempting to repair the damage that was done so badly uh, those some of those issues were had their type changed or their connection to a parent changed and by changing the connection to a parent we could no longer reconstruct them and it's just that's just too painful 
So we rolled back. And the permission that allowed the damage to be to be done has been removed from everyone but a relatively small set of users. Uh, any questions there? That's uh, clear. Great, thank you. So now moving to the close does not planned. So we have a few elements. Uh, a plugin uh, was not showing, but it was brand new. It wasn't released and it took time. So thanks for people for helping the contributor. It's now on the plugin side, so no action required. Uh, CD release for the Google Auth plugin has been fixed with the help of James Nord, as far as I remember. Uh, there were issues uh, on the CD process setup on that on that one and dependencies. Yeah, there's still an open question there with regard yeah. to Git configuration, but I think he succeeded in releasing. That's the condition. Right. Absolutely. That's okay. uh, Got it. Uh, James was able to fix the unlines that were blocking the build, the main build on CI Jenkins IO, which in turn was blocking the release. Got it. Uh, we have a subsequent issue on the Git configuration setup. Uh, we had a question in the uh, related to IPv6 support to GFROG. So today, repo jenkinsci.org and the whole GFROG platform as a service is not exposed using IPv6. So that's the answer. And I've asked the support though, how do they manage their Indian users because they cannot use IPv4. Uh, they've been requested to open a request for enhancement on their portal. So that's something I need to do. To do soon, but right now, yeah, the answer is we, we cannot support IPv6 only for repo Jenkins CI, and we cannot afford uh, hosting and building a gateway for that. That will be too much bandwidth, and the cost will be uh, unacceptable for the project. Mm -hmm. Unless we find a network sponsor who can do this for us, of course. <laughs> Any question? So thanks for this contributor. Now moving to the work in progress, I'm gonna take them on the order on the notes. Uh, a new issue opened by Badil uh, this, uh, yesterday, a plugin failed to build since we operated on the G-Center uh, removal on the repo Jenkins CI. So as indicated on the issue, I did that in pair with Stefan this morning. We reproduce the error from a scratch environment, and then we relaxed the constraint on the filter. So the G-Center orphan is a new repository inside public that replaced the former G-Center, which was used by too many people to download non-Jenkins artifacts. So right now we are applying filters that select which artifacts match or doesn't match the pattern. If the artifact match the pattern, then it's mirrored and we can continue working. If it doesn't, then it's not downloaded and we receive 404. Uh, in that case, we were receiving 404. So we had to use the right level of uh, pat pattern selection. And we verified it was working on the local setup by starting from scratch again. So now I ju I'm just waiting for basal confirmation that it's okay. So that issue is almost closable. Mark, do you mind to 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 move the remove G Center and the SS and type repositories as the next issue? Uh, so one, yes, two, three, no four, problem. Five, I think five, six, seventh. Yes, no problem. So you want me to talk to it? No. Uh, yes, and then we will have some add-ons uh, because they had a great idea that's worth sharing here. Oh, and I okay. need to report the, the changes done uh, earlier today. So can I let you start? Yeah, so so the Artifactory Bandwidth Reduction Project implemented production last Friday. And that implementation in production looked good in our initial assessment. We found a few surprises uh, even in the initial assessment. One was, oh dear, I forget. Well, some tools that were surprising us, we've adapted to them. On, on Friday, and then, oh, grape configuration, that was what it was. Thanks to Basel Pro for that. Then, Damien, you, let you talk to the next topic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, while working on this uh, today, uh, outside, the, the first bullet of my last comment is the former issue. Um, we, with Stefan, we'll also uh, 
discovered that gcenter and atlassian were still available not through the public repositories that we use for jenkins build but still publicly available which can be a source uh, a source of mayhem um, the reason is because gcenter and atlassian repository which were the entry point of the mirrors has been removed uh, from the anonymous access however the gcenter cache and atlassian cache which effectively are gcenter and atlassian that's how gfrog works internally this one were still on any remote and anything so by removing them the both of them from the both uh, permission schemes now you need to authenticate in order to check the content of these mirrors which is still needed for exercise like we did this morning to search for artifacts that are no longer mirrored but that cannot be used easily if you want to download artifact for free without authentication. And finally, uh, feedback from Hervé. Um, that issue from this morning underlined that we are we still have cached artifact on CI Jenkins IO because the plugin is still building on CI Jenkins IO, while on fresh new system it doesn't. So the proposal will be to clean up the ICP cache now that we have persisted the new settings for last Friday. Hmm. Okay. With tell me, tell me the benefit. That just sounds like an opportunity to consume much more bandwidth. With as we repopulate the cache, uh, I I think. Well, I'm I'm prone to say let's not dis destroy the cache and repopulate just because I don't want to consume the bandwidth. But I think the argument there is, oh, then that's delaying our discovery of problems. Is exactly. That Exactly. Um, the, the the thing is, cleaning up the cache allows us to control when we will start to see plugins that might break, like this one, inadvertently. Problem is, the most used plugin have been tested, but some dormant plugin might have issues, and we will discover them on the worst moment during a security release or that kind of problem. Um, mm, okay. I'm thinking aloud, given what you said, and I'm I have the following proposal for you, folks. Since the goal is to uh, is to make Gfrog happy with the bandwidth, we we should avoid until the end of the current month to have a decache that will consume a bit of bandwidth. I don't think it will be that much, but still avoid that risk. So they should be content with the December results. Half of the month will be with cache and without Gcenter. And we plan in January, once everyone will be back from uh, Christmas uh, holidays, we have an, uh, a planned ACP cleanup for beginning of January in that case. So we control then, we will all be available to fix or help contributor. Mm -hmm. What do you think? That sounds sign to me, although I'm also okay if, I think I think Hervé's logic is is sound to say maybe we should spend the bandwidth now if we're if we're available now to adapt to it, I'm okay with cash if destroying the cash now. I think I think either is fine. And I think I had not considered the let's let's find things sooner is much better than finding things later. And it probably means we ought to to not just not just flush the cash, but we ought to flush the cash and possibly launch a build of every plugin that has not been built in the last six months now now those are those are those that will discover problems that are unrelated to caching right there there are a number of plugins like that where it no longer builds and it no longer builds but we haven't seen it yet because no one's tried to build it exactly so uh, I, I, that sounds good i think acp cache flush immediately is fine and if we want to wait until january that's also fine i i think it's it's a good idea I, I retract my objection. I, I propose January as a separate topic. So then we can focus on less tasks for that milestone given the approaching holiday. Is that okay? Yes, that sounds great. Um, I've just edited the note uh, a bit because I believe Hervé might have to go early. And since I was late, I just want to free him uh, because mm. kiddos and stuff. That's good. I, I forgot about this because I was late. My bad. Uh, Hervé, update center. That should be quick. Mm, nothing since last last week, uh, except that uh, working on another uh, uh, help desk issue. I'm 
reviewing how we are authenticate uh, for the file share used by the update center. So I will uh, update uh, the pull request to be reviewed by the Jenkins security with a command to authenticate. Mm -hmm. Replacing um, the SAS token. SAS, SAS to SP. Uh, to do review by the GenSec team in any case. And as uh, Stefan reminded the team uh, yesterday, uh, we have a performance, a stress test to run. These are the update center step. Did I forget something? No, uh, there is a still C. Thinking transplant proposal uh, reduction, but uh, oh. yep. work in progress and no, no real, yeah, nothing done since last week. Nice job, thanks. ACP cleanup in January. Is there anything else to add? Something not clear? Nope. Okay. Uh, next topic, still you, Hervé. Uh, I believe this, should, this one should be quick. So the goal is to replace BlobX fair by uh, the AZ copy command. Yeah, I believe so, it's the same status. Yeah, I listed uh, every file share used uh, by different services in Jenkins Infra. And uh, um, from this plan, I, I just need to put in place service principle to interact with file share instead of using a SS token as team Jacob uh, warned they are more difficult to rotate and to rework than other authentication methods. Cool. And you wrote a finely grained plan, which is really nice because everyone can take over or you can continue after long holidays with a fresh mind. So great job. Next topic is uh, digital sun renewal. I believe you were speaking about this earlier before I joined. Yeah, so I've con I confirm, Oliver, that uh, we could wait until uh, uh, the beginning of January to renew the sponsorship, as we still have some credits for this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, he confirmed me that uh, he will uh, uh, indeed uh, renew the sponsorship uh, first week of January. So we should be good. Cool. So I believe since you will be in holidays, uh, is that okay if I take care of, of this one uh, January? So you won't have to worry on about this. Is that okay for you, Hervé? Yes. Cool. I believe these are the last elements you had, Hervé. Did you have other subjects? No. I don't see others. No. Okay. No. So you're free to, to play uh, Santa Claus for, for children. <laughs> Not to live it, yeah. So. Ah, it's okay. It's a secret. Okay. Yes, but I stopped believing in Santa, at least uh, since last month. I know it's John Mark Mason. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, next topic, Jiglit, Jigit cloning, not converting on lines on Windows. Uh, that topic has been opened by um, uh, James Nord. Every you are free to go if you need to. Do, no worries. Yeah, uh, I'll stay a bit. Uh, so that has to be checked. But however, he pointed out that is so different behaviors between the Windows virtual machines and the Windows containers. If you can scroll on the bottom, um, which which mean the setup. And I, the, the thing is, I don't know Windows enough, so I need help from a Windows specialist because I don't know that setup. Where does it come from? Is it a setup on the Windows base level or is it on the Git installation that Gigit could reuse even if it should not? 
because JGit runs inside the JVM and not from the Git binary installation. Uh, Mark, stop me if I'm wrong, but I believe if you don't have Git installed, but you use JGit, if you have the JVM with the controller that allows to run Git operation without the Git installation. Correct. Although, I, as far as I know, we have Git installed on all of our agents. Uh, but yep. I, I think, Damien, this is one that it's probably best just to assign it to me because I don't know that there's enough gain for anyone else in the team to go learn the details of how Git does its does its configuration and installation. There are a number of possible misunderstandings for James that could that might resolve this and just needs a little more research. But I don't mm -hmm. think it's a it's a good use of your time for us to put you on this one. I'm okay if you just assign it to me and let me take it. Okay. It it, it just this is a it, it's a it's an ongoing topic in the the world of text files and how we handle and end, end of line conventions and automated text automated formatting etc. Okay, thanks for this. Um, which means I'm I've assigned you to this one. Great. Assigned to Mark. Ongoing uh, Git. It's already assigned to Mark. I just uh, I just did it. Oh. And I edited the title because I was bugged by the G, by the typo on JGit. <laughs> okay, Mark. Uh, but don't hesitate because there is clearly something behaving differently depending on the below uh, below operating system. Right. Well, well, and and it seems that there's something different a difference of behavior on ci.jenkins.io whether container or non-container. So, so there are enough differences to make this report very interesting to us. Absolutely. Next one, symbolic link for latest for Windows table. So that issue won't be moved to the next milestone because in fact, it's blocked by the AZ copy migration. We need AZ copy to dereference symlink when copying to um, an Azure uh, file storage. So I'm adding a comment on the issue. Uh, and that one, until it's blocked, will be back on the backlog. Any objection? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next issue. The uh, is email not received. I propose that we, uh, I'm gonna close that issue. The person never answered. It's been almost two weeks. So unless someone object, this one is going to the closed list uh, for the next milestone. Mm. Uh, the problem was uh, the gray listing. The email uh, was sent, but uh, gray listed by the receiver and that's something without information or contact, there is nothing we can do about this. Mark, uh, can I let you speak for the next one? Oh, oh this one, okay. I put this one, uh, this is the, Modified, whoops, no, am I right on the right one? Issues modified by spammer? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, um, I, I was thinking about the DNS. Okay. Issues are modified by a spammer. I believe this one is fixed. Yes. And we At least I, I just recorded it as, as fixed, but I did it during this meeting. Ah, okay, perfect. So let me move it on the closed then. It, it's, it's actually already there, Damien. Oh, cool. Thanks. So I'm going to do the is, same. For... I did this Jira database restored after spam attack, but it's it's there. Cool. So now you can speak about the DNS domain registration then. Yeah. So there we found, so we're reminded that Tyler Croy kindly donates the Jenkins.io domain name and the Jenkins-ci.org domain name. And it's hosted and he makes the payment every two or three years when it becomes comes up for payment. And he makes that payment roughly 30 days before it expires. And so our, our alert systems warn us 45 and 60 days before that it's about to expire. And we then watch carefully to be sure that he still renews it. And if he were to choose to not renew it, we would contact him and, and get his help. Right now, we've got one open topic still still coming. So he did, he renewed one of them. The other one we expect will renew in the same timely fashion. And in our next meeting in January, we can double check. 
So I've added a reminder on the team calendar for January, just to be sure that with the Christmas, uh, we don't uh, garbage collect too much our mind, or we can, with no worries. Right. We're, we're now down to 38 days before it expires. And so in about 10 days, we'll be within that time range and see if Tyler does the renewal for us. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Tyler, for sponsoring the project. Uh, Stefan, I believe yeah. you both, uh, no one on the team was able to work on the leftover uh, migration to RM64. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Um, yes. No work done to be continued. Okay, because you spent your time on other major issues, so no worries. I'm keeping it there because we can split the burden on that area. Uh, this one I did a little, but I forgot if it's two weeks ago or this week. You did um, things with XQ. Yes, I used the new tool XQ that extracts uh, those domain and, and put them in a file and, and export them in the reports.jenkins.io. And now I need to uh, do more work to get the IPs and build a JSON file and need to work around. But the skeleton is, is up and running. I'm not sure it's, it's detailed enough, but work in it's progress. Mirror list. Next step, XQ installation. Oh, it's 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 done. To be, no, it's not released and not deployed. Not released. Request and, and so just a word because I I pushed a bit Stefan on that area. Uh, for that issue, we are going to publish a txt file for now. The txt file uh, we had to be careful because once we start publishing this on report Jenkins IO publicly, that will start to be automated. That's why I propose that we close the issue once the txt file is OK. However, we will need to continue working to produce a JSON file that can be parsed, like the GitHub API, which means anyone outside can automate retrieving the Jenkins Infra IP, and we can add more IPs. But this constrains us on thinking a bit about the model we want to provide inside the JSON file. We might think about versioning like an API. So that will mean we would have a version one uh, IPs. And if we want to do a breaking change, we should be able to have a version a V2, V3, et cetera. Oh, nice. But that means careful planning. So that's why right now the txt file is the first step. And once it's available, we have done the whole continuous deployment process, then we can iterate. Any question? So just a word for Mark and Bruno and eventually Kevin, that could be a source of a newcomer issue because updating the script to extract more information using update CLI, shell, whatever mechanism could be really easy and could be easy to contribute and test locally. And that could be nice contribution to the Jenkins Infra project. We just need to set the foundation for the first extraction, and then anything on our repository could be retrieved, especially uh, uh, the public IP. They can be exported somewhere and then reused. Just a note, but most probably in January. Any question? Mm -hmm. uh, next topic. Uh, migrate, uh, change the Elm chart used for get Jenkins IO from the legacy mirror bits to the new one used for and built by Hervé for the new update center. Uh, no work done on this one. It's still to be done soon. Uh, now that we have almost finished the subscription setup, I've started working on this. This one is sensitive. If no one objects, I might try to do it between Christmas and the New Year's Eve because that I, will be I holidays. Disagree. Because with, that would be holidays. Yes, but that one is very really very sensitive, and I will prefer I, I will prefer having less person impacted uh, during the operation. And that's quite easy. I've almost done all the work two months ago. I was uh, it's just I had to cancel the operation due to other issues. So um, I'm 
Yeah, uh, I would prefer having it on a calm moment with no changes, no one walking, no one consuming. So they, I mean, I can break it during five minutes without any major issue. Okay. And in exchange, I will finish one hour earlier one of these days during walking days. Agreed. Is it is it a deal? Yes. <laughs> Schedule between Christmas and New Year's Eve. Christmas. Okay. Any question? One as a reminder, one of the benefits of that change of Elm chart is that the we will have a read-only file system on Mirrorbit and HTTP for Get Jenkins IO, which will allow us to fine-tune and detect where are the writes that cost us a lot of money on Azure. That's the next step on January. Great. Not pool size tuning. That issue is almost there. Uh, by uh, using smaller virtual machine, we, we saw that we were a bit, uh, let's say, hungry in resource allocation. So the last miles will be trying to change the new node pool, which has five machines, trying to shrink it to three machines. Uh, because 99% of the resource usage for both TPU and memory is clearly above the limits we have set. So specifically for that use case, we will change the default rule of thumb that we use on Kubernetes, where request and limit are the same. That's a rule of thumb and a good get started. Now what we want is packing more services because we know that these services usually use less resources than what we were expecting. Oh, but that we has been on it's not, yeah. Exactly. We checked on Datadog. That's why uh, we, I know that 99 percentile is OK. We still need to keep the limits as they are today, but the resource allocation that, that Kubernetes used to decide whether to pack or not the services on a single machine, that one can be reduced. So it's just a few pull requests uh, that should happen uh, today or tomorrow, last case. Is there any question on this one? Okay. To be done. Resource decrease, but no limit change. Uh, next issue in France, on RM64, that's you, Stefan. Yes, let me remember what I did last. Um, um, yes, I, I did uh, um, set the new node pool in IRM on, on uh, infra. I did set up a new agent on the Infra CI uh, using that ARM pool with the ARM64 within the label name. Um, I did try it twice. And now I'm working on the Packer image uh, for the uh, all-in-one to make sure that we use as much as we can of that uh, new ARM node pool and, and to replace the, um, the Elm one, the Docker Elm, I forgot the name of that agent and file, yeah. uh, to um, to converge to uh, it's converge to use as much as we can uh, the all in one and to use the ARM node pool I'm not sure to it's, it's, it's uh... migrated to packer image all in one and the next I believe are Docker, uh, our Terraform project. Yes, we need all the tools first. That's that's the, the problem now. It's working on the Packer image to add all the tools that we need for all the, the agents as much as possible. And the hidden benefit is less updates, less update CLI, less builds, and less cost due to that. We will only update dependencies only once on the all-in-one image. I believe you started with DOCTL. Yes, and XQ. And XQ done. It's not published, would say Damien. <laughs> Is there any question, things to clarify on that topic? 
No? Okay. Next topic, sponsorships. Okay, so uh, tr uh, all, all controllers are now using the new subscription for Azure Virtual Machine agents. When they are ephemeral, of course, not for permanent agents. Um, that's the first. All controllers are using the new subscription for VMs, exception of release CI, which does not doesn't use any VM at all, which does not use Azure VMs. Uh, we did uh, an operation earlier today. Thanks, Stefan, for catching that. There were some overlap on the network I created for that. So we shifted the network earlier today with success. Um, network overlap fixed. I did a mistake on when planning the site there. Uh, next step and work in progress. Uh, Packer uh, builds in this subscription. Uh, and I think after that, we should be able to complete until we find another workload to be run. Uh, but I propose that we can start uh, closing it. As a reminder, no spot instance, but we can run, we can try running the bomb with VM here. Because we are, I mean, the, the, the quota is insane. I was able to uh, increase the virtual machine CPU quota to more than 4,000. So we should be able to spin up more than 500 agents at the same time without reaching the quota. That will be a lot of money, but all pay with the subscription. Um, I've checked the subscription. We have reached the $600 consumed. And for December, we are at uh, 536. Reminder that it costs more in the subscription on that new sponsor than on the previous one because we don't have spot instances. So the conception, the credit will be consumed way more in a way more. Uh, with, we will have to use way more credits until yes, we are able that's, to. That's more confident because they will not kill the the spot instance, and at that period of the year, they will kill a lot of spot instance. Absolutely. So Damien, this is for this is for Azure. That yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. All right. So so it is that we don't have we we can't use spot instances with the donated credits. And um, it, yeah, now it's only because right now they don't have enough spot uh, available instances uh, on that the region where we use it. Ah, okay. So it's not a general limitation of the donation. It's rather no, it's something not. specific for this region. Oh, thank you. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah. And when we, we ask, it was the week before Thanksgiving. So right. most probably they won't have until January. Right. The holiday period is certainly high demand. Great. Thank you. But yeah, good point. It wasn't really clear. Is there any question on this one? Stefan, what's the status on the GOS test that allows us for Packer to test both Windows and Linux? That was not easy, but um, we did manage to go ahead. And now we got uh, GOS for Windows running quite well. And all the update CLI updated to update the correct file. So uh, we are now at the at the place where we can uh, factorize and have a, a common one and um, I mean pinpoint the GOS to deal with uh, either Linux, Windows or both of them. Uh, that would be useful for, for the step that we're doing right now for the all-in-one with all the tools. So it's working uh, better and better. But that would will that will have to wait for the new subscription usage. Great work, because you were able to find issues that we fixed. So the next release of the all-in-one image uh, should uh, should have a fixed and updated version, such as YQ that hasn't been updated since two months, yeah. for instance. Great work. Any question? 
Okay, uh, next one, Chinese website redirection. Um, so I'm sorry, uh, folks. I, I each time I try to say, each time I say, hey Kevin, I will take time with you. Then something happened and I'm not available to work and to help. So I'm really sorry for this one. I hope we should be able to do something, but I believe that will be in January. I don't mind trying this week, but honestly. No, uh, yeah, so Damien, Kevin and I had a conversation and I felt like we shouldn't take any of your time until both he and I have completed our activities to be prepared for that. This is not urgent enough to justify us taking taking time over other things particularly when when i in particular have more actions that i need to be taking before we're ready to meet with you let's get get me to do my part and then we'll then we'll after january sometime in january we'll we'll hopefully meet with you and get this off our list okay thanks for the work uh is that okay if we delay this one to january yes January. And I propose we close the scaleway sponsorship since you didn't receive any answer. Uh, Stefan, we yeah, call I, it. A... I, I did send a message saying that I will close the issue as I don't have heard uh, anything from him. Okay. So, answer. Let's close and search. Other I'm pretty sponsor. sure he will think of us as soon as he will hear the, that those oh. kind of sponsorship are coming back because I, I was on his back a lot. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for taking care of that. I propose that January 2024 will be either they come back to us and that's that's really good or we try with OVH or Etzner. Okay, for everyone? Mm. That was the last issue. Um Mark, do you mind? The... Yeah, yeah. Do you mind uh, on your? Oh, it's uh, Stefan. Go to the L desk and let's see. Um, the new ones. If we have new issues or entry age issue. Okay, so we have the backend extension indexer build is broken on infrastructure. Oh, I missed and, this and one. for me, that is that is a duplicate of the larger thing that is that oh, the backend yeah. extension indexer needs a complete reimplementation. Or work to find some ugly band aid, some some alternate solution until we can get to a reimplementation. Okay, I'm gonna close it as a duplicate then. Great. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. I don't see other triage or new issues. So, Maybe. people, do you have a specific topics to speak on the infrastructure? No. Okay. So I propose that we stop the recording. And so for people watching us, see you in two weeks. Bye -bye. And for the other, then we can start saying things after the end of the recording. I'm not the one able to close the recording. I think I can stop it.